aspect of the Bernoulli principle I'm going to demonstrate today is where the velocity of, the, of a fluid that is liquid or gas is high, the pressure is low. You can do many of these demonstrations at home and I encourage you to do so. The first one involves two 3x5 cards. If I hold the 3x5 cards close together and blow sharply between them, you can see that the cards come together. Now we need to use Bernoulli to describe why that's true. Where I blow between the cards, there's a high velocity of air and thus a low pressure. There's ordinary atmospheric pressure outside the cards and that pressure difference pushes the cards together. Next, I'll take a piece of paper and I'm going to put the paper below my lower lip and blow sharply across it. And first, I want you to predict what's going to happen when I do that. All right, now I'll blow across it. And you can see that when I blow across it, the paper lifts up. And we need to describe why that happens. So when I blow across it, I have a high velocity of air on top of the paper. That causes a low pressure area in that region. We have ordinary atmospheric pressure underneath the paper. And that pressure difference pushes the paper up. Next, I have a ping pong ball and a funnel, and what I'm going to do is blow into the funnel, and first I want you to predict what's going to happen to the ping pong ball when I do that. All right, now I'll do that. And you can see that the ping pong ball stays up in the funnel, and we have to describe why that happens. As I blow through the funnel, that creates a small area for the air to flow across the top of the ball. That small area causes the velocity of the air to be high. Where you have that high velocity of air above the ping pong ball, that causes the pressure to be low. And that low pressure on top, high pressure on bottom, gives you enough upward force to compensate for the weight of the ping pong ball, and the ping pong ball stays up in the funnel. Next, I have a 3x5 card, and I'm going to fold it so it makes a little U-shape, upside-down U-shape, and I'm going to put that on the table. I'm going to blow through the tunnel, and I want you to predict what's going to happen to the card when I blow through the tunnel. Now, I'll do it. And you can see that the card pretty much stayed still, and perhaps you could even see that when I blew through the tunnel, the uh, top bowed down a little bit. So now we need to talk about why that occurs. When I blow through the tunnel, the uh, air has a high velocity, thus a low pressure. There's ordinary atmospheric pressure on top of the card, and that pressure difference pushes the card down onto the table. Here I have an air supply that blows air out, and when I turn it on, I'll have it levitate a ball in the airflow. Now I need to describe why the ball stabilizes in the vertical airflow. If the airflow is to the right of the ball, then you have a high velocity, low pressure area to the right of the ball, and the ordinary atmospheric pressure to the left of the ball, and that pressure difference pushes the ball to the right. It will overshoot, and then the same thing will happen on the other side, it will keep overshooting, and then finally the motion will damp out and the ball will stay stable in the airflow. I have another demonstration to do with the airflow in the ball. I'm going to shoot the airflow sideways and suspend the ball in the airstream. And I want you to try to figure out why that works. To describe what
why the ball stays levitated when the airstream is horizontal, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that the airflow is below the ball. If that's true, then we have a high velocity, low pressure below the ball, ordinary atmospheric pressure above the ball. That would give us a net force down, pressure difference thus a net force down, and the ball would fall. If the airflow is above the ball, if the airflow is above the ball, then you have a high velocity, low pressure area above the ball, uh, an ordinary atmospheric pressure below the ball, that pressure difference causes an upward force. If that upward force is equal to the weight of the ball, the ball will stay levitated.